It's been a dream forever of many to go to Mars and observe the conditions and live there. Both NASA and Elon Musk's SpaceX are in the lead for Mars-related missions. But so far, it seems Elon will reach there soon. With so much activity, the next 12 months promise to be as busy as any SpaceX has had. Here's a look at where some of the company's most significant projects stand other than the mission to Mars. Hello guys, welcome back to Tech World for another space video. Today we're going to talk about Elon Musk's next space adventure and how he's going to fulfill it. So stick with us till the end to know what they are and let's dive into the topic. Starship Enterprise This is the first big project to be finished by SpaceX. This year, SpaceX aims to conduct the spacecraft's initial orbital take-a-look at flight that ought to be a protracted means toward deciding the readiness of the spaceship for future missions into orbit. The spaceship may be a key part of future growth plans for SpaceX. The vehicle could not only help humans travel to the Moon and Mars, but it could also be used to deploy massive numbers of satellites and produce large quantities of product in-house. Production of the orbiter hasn't been without hiccups. It took months for SpaceX to successfully land spaceship prototypes, and in November, SpaceX chief executive Elon Musk reportedly warned workers that delays in production of the rocket's engines had placed the company on the verge of bankruptcy. Still, SpaceX is pushing forward with the project, revealing a paradigm launch tower for the orbiter in a Gregorian calendar month that Musk says can eventually be used to catch rockets returning to Earth. So guys, this can be named as one of Elon's four major missions because this reusable spacecraft is made with the goal of sending people and cargo to space in mind. Do you know what's on the list next? Well, let's see what is there. Starlink Expansion Since the beginning, SpaceX has launched around 2,000 self-built satellites to serve as the backbone of a worldwide broadband network that the corporation began testing in 2020. The service is already available in portions of North America, Europe, and Australia, and coverage is projected to grow as additional satellites are deployed. The corporation intends to eventually install over 10,000 satellites in support of the Starlink project, which has been marketed as a low-latency, high-speed network accessible to internet users in rural areas in particular. The service presently has approximately 150,000 subscribers, but the firm has failed to keep up with demand for its network owing in part to supply constraints that have delayed the construction of the terminals required for customers to get a signal from the company's satellites, owing in part to supply constraints that have delayed the construction of the terminals required for customers to get a signal from the company's satellites. First of all, let's see what Starlink is and what its goal is. Starlink's Goal Musk's Starlink project seeks to offer internet connections to practically anybody in the world via an expanding network of private satellites circling overhead. I mean, what a good thing this would be if achieved. So far, he says this is available in 32 countries around the world. Tintin A, Tintin B. SpaceX's first two Starlink test vessels were launched in 2018. The mission was a success. Based on preliminary results, the business asked authorities to allow its fleet to fly at lower altitudes than initially anticipated, and the FCC agreed. On May 23, 2019, the first 60 Starlink satellites were launched on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The satellites successfully achieved their operating altitude of 340 miles, 550 kilometers, which is low enough for atmospheric drag to bring them back to Earth in a few years and save them from becoming space debris after they expire. So, it is clear that the Starlink expansion would achieve its target of providing a worldwide network connection by covering the remaining countries. Okay, let's move to the third topic on our list today. Please do leave a comment if you want to know more about these missions. Crewed Mission What are these so-called crewed missions? 
Basically, space missions fall into two categories. One is unmanned, and the other is crewed. The difference between these are that unmanned missions are operated remotely and crewed missions have a human crew in the spacecraft to operate it and conduct the mission. So far, SpaceX has flown seven crewed missions. SpaceX flew its first crewed mission flight in 2020 and has since launched four trips into space, transporting both astronauts and civilians. SpaceX plans to begin a venture with space tourism business Axiom Space Inc. in the coming year that will transport three humans to the International Space Station. The flight is planned to be the first wholly private mission to the space station, with liftoff set for March. All right, on to the last major mission of SpaceX. Carbon Capture First, let's see what exactly carbon capture is because this is relatively new for us, especially related to the space business. What is carbon capture and storage? Carbon capture requires capturing carbon dioxide at the point of emission, moving it to a storage facility, typically deep below, and isolating it. This suggests that we may be able to prevent extra CO2 from entering the atmosphere. There are two levels of carbon capture. Post-combustion capture process. In this process, CO2 is captured after the fossil fuel is consumed in post-combustion carbon capture. When fossil fuels are burned, they emit flue gases, which contain CO2, water vapor, nitrogen, and sulfur dioxide. In this process, CO2 is isolated and collected from the flue gases provided by the burning of fossil fuels in a post-combustion process. This method is most widely utilized in carbon capture technologies. It is a practical method since it may be used in both new and existing coal-fired power plants. However, there are some disadvantages. Post-combustion carbon capture necessitates the use of physically large equipment, which might reduce the efficiency of turbines. Pre-combustion capture process. Through pre-combustion carbon capture, carbon is captured and collected from fossil fuels before combustion. Coal, oil, or natural gas is heated with steam and oxygen to produce synthesis gas or syngas. The gas is mostly composed of CO2, hydrogen, H2, and carbon monoxide, CO. A subsequent reaction turns water, H2O, to hydrogen. During this process, part of the carbon monoxide is converted into carbon dioxide. As a result, a gas mixture of H2 and CO2 is produced. So SpaceX is involved in this mission, but in a different type of capture and reuse process rather than the basic capture and storage process. Musk said on Twitter in December that SpaceX would begin a program to extract carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and transform it into rocket fuel. The statement is far from a concrete plan, but it comes less than a year after Musk's charitable foundation announced an XPRIZE Foundation contest to award $100 million to students, researchers, and entrepreneurs with plans to develop carbon removal systems that could potentially reduce effects of climate change. So guys, these are the main four mission Elon Musk plans to achieve. Other than his ever-so-famous Great Mars mission, where he not only plans to observe the conditions, but also to colonize Mars. What do you think about these missions, especially the Starlink Network broadband mission and the carbon capture mission? Because these are answers to some of the major problems the current world is facing. Let me tell you briefly about what other missions Elon has in mind for 2022 before we blast off. In June, USSF-12, a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket will launch the Wide Field of View WFOV, experimental missile warning satellite for the United States Space Force. It will take off from Space Launch Complex 41 at Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. In July, SpaceX will launch the Dragon CRS-25 cargo resupply mission to the International Space Station from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. In August, a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket will launch SES-20 and SES-21 communication satellites. 
it will lift off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. In September, NASA and SpaceX will launch the Crew-5 mission to the International Space Station. The Crew Dragon will be carrying NASA astronauts Nicole Mann and Josh Quesada, Japanese astronaut Koichi Wakata, and Russian cosmonaut Anna Kakina. The Falcon 9 rocket will lift off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. In October, a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket will launch the Transporter 6 ride-sharing mission. It will take off from Florida's Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. The USSF-52 mission for the U.S. Space Force will be launched by a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket. It will take off from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida's Pad 39A. In November, a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket will launch the Polaris Dawn mission commanded by Jared Isaacman and will be his second trip to space. Isaacman will be joined by pilot Scott Kid Poteet and SpaceX employees Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon. In December, NASA's Polar Resources Ice Mining Experiment 1, Prime 1 mission will launch to the moon's South Pole on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket. The mission will use the Nova C lunar landing platform developed by Intuitive Machines. That's all for today's video guys, don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments section and like this video. Subscribe to our channel for more and share this with your friends who are interested in space related news. Until next time, have a nice day.